get my sign here. My pee bottle. Let's get out there. Let's do it. And it's so windy, my sign is like a sail. Folks, I found this vest on the ground. Hi, everybody. It's Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe. And yeah, we really did get a little glance there of our good friend, Sarasota Tim, and his urinal. I'm so glad he shared that with us. And I'm so glad that he's keeping it in a place where he can easily access it should he need to reach it if he's having to flee the state again, in case there's any emergencies that might be happening. But anyway, guys, if you do like this type of content, make sure that you subscribe, hit the likes, join the channel, leave me a comment. It all helps to help this channel grow. And I do apologize. I know I've been out for a while. I am obviously in school. And before we get started and actually take a look at the video that we did want to, I did want to look at today. Uh, let me throw my disclaimer out here because I hear Tim's getting really uh, litigious lately and uh, trying to um, get down some of the uh, channels here on YouTube. So he's been striking people. So yeah. And uh, obviously, uh, my name's Ray. This is Life and Vibe. And I'm still kind of reeling over the fact that I just got a glance of a urinal. Not that I haven't seen one on the floor before. Uh, <laughs> why is Tim carrying a urinal in the front of his car? Is he planning something? I don't think we'll find out. But anyway, the video that I did want us to take a look at today, and we're gonna, I'm going to make this real quick, is one where he talks about going to the dermatologist's office. And I am going. we're going to take a look at this one um here the just leaving the dermatologist i got sliced and diced <laughs> and the reason i'm kind of interested in this video is that i actually did work um uh, when i was training i am a registered nurse i am trained to be a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner and i do not treat or diagnose anybody on these channels but obviously i do find topics around health interesting and uh, I did work for an extended period of time when I was training as an RN at a plastic surgeon's office, and I dealt with a lot of skin cancers. Uh, my job was actually standing there with the biopsy cup uh, as the plastic surgeon took parts of people's skin off and put it into the cups in order for the biopsy. So all these biopsies that Tim is talking about I used to actually assist the plastic surgeon with those. So I am very familiar with the process of working with skin cancer patients. And so I wanted to take a quick peek see and see what pearls of wisdom our friend Tim might have. So let's take a look and see what Tim has to say today, if anything. I, I know his views have been dropping. <laughs> and uh, I've only come back, uh, obviously, to kind of keep keep the channel going. I am trying to focus more on my life as a grad student and kind of the things that I do. Um, but in the meantime, while I'm still so busy with school, I'll make this reaction on Tim because I know people miss me reacting to Tim. So let's go. Let's see what like I said pills of wisdom he's got for us. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim. All right. I look like a mummy. I got uh, I got one on my arm, one on my arm, one on my back, two or three on my chest. I think there's six, she said, that she whacked for biopsy. Look at this. I know you guys have probably Ooh. seen a little black mole. Does he have... Does, did he actually have to have, um, I, I didn't know if I saw sutures there. Was that sutures or was that his hair? Black mole. Mm, okay. Interesting. I'm, I've been more concerned about that. No, that mole on his nose, but I guess that's under watch with the dermatologist. She didn't take that. So I guess that's not as concerning for her. Six. That's pretty, that's, that's a lot. That's a, that's quite a few biopsies. Not that I haven't seen more, but that's quite a few. Uh, with my short haircuts, maybe when I was uh, videoing, and she saw it too. And uh, 
she sent that out for biopsy. I said, well, look, mm -hmm. I've been to dermatologists many times and it's always, you know, non life threatening, you know, treatable basal cell carcinoma. She was moaning and groaning a little bit about some concerns. And I said, are you seeing something that is alarming? She says, well, well, there's three types of skin cancers that are predominant. Somebody who is light skin and light eyed like Tim is probably going to be very susceptible for squamous cell carcinomas, uh, which start out as actinic keratoses. And uh, basal cell carcinomas are a little bit rarer. The squamous cells are definitely ones that we get due to a lot of, you know, uh, exposure to the sun uh, and uh, then obviously the concerning ones are melanomas and so I think that is what potentially is she's trying to rule out for especially with her darkered color with it being a mole if it's had any changes at all since she's last she probably saw something about that mole that she did not like and she just wants to rule out uh, for melanoma Basal cell carcinomas actually can be very dangerous. I did want people to know they tend to be, um, they can burrow actually. So depending on the location of the basal cell, it actually can be um, more insidious than people realize. I think that it's very important at all times to be ensuring that you are using good sunscreens and being aware of the amount of time that you spend in the sun. It, it's certainly something that I've been more <laughs> careful with, especially since I've become older. I've always been pretty careful about it, but I live in a beach town and I can't say that I, I go to the beach a lot because the thought of being in the sun and having the skin damage that comes from it is enough to make me kind of stay away. <laughs> I said, I know you got to get a biopsy for definitive you know, answers. Yes. But she goes, yeah, the one here on your head is, uh, is dark. And that's concerning on one side, the other side of it, you know, I don't know, something like that. I'm like, wow, great. You know what? Where was I supposed to turn? Somewhere around here. Uh, so I'm axing you guys for prayers that the biopsies come back seven to 10 days. Well, I'm sure Tim's asking for prayers and, you know, he really is asking for buy me a coffee is because he wants you to feel sympathy for him. But he's, you know, he's the, a, a man who's always kept a short haircut, probably. Uh, probably in his younger years, I can see that Tim was probably not a fan of the sunscreen. And uh, he's, his skin looks like it's been out there in the sun. I mean, it happens. It's it's if you are somebody who is of a Anglo Caucasian descent and you are out there in the sun with no sunscreen on, no hats, no clothing, you know, protective clothing, nothing to cover yourself up, then you are going to have pretty high probability of having some type of skin cancers it was just very likely uh they'll give me an answer i said well look if it's you know worst case scenario uh does it uh you know is it survival she goes oh yeah everything's treatable i said all you gotta do is cut off half my head she goes no only a third but yeah, you know, um, it just seems like in my life between uh, the glaucoma, which I got early in life and didn't go to a doctor for, and now I'm treating it. With mm, see, okay, so yes, exactly. You did not see an ophthalmologist regularly from the age of 40 in order to maintain any eye health. And one of the things that is highly recommended to people even if your eyesight has been perfectly good your whole life, is that by the time you're 40, you do need to start having regular optical appointments and getting checked for glaucomas, getting checked for cataracts, 
all of these things start to become more apparent starting at the age of 40. If you have diabetes, you need to start seeing somebody even earlier. So all of these things that are happening to you physically, Tim, were things that you had greater risk factor for because you didn't take care of it. So Tim is a cautionary lesson for younger people at this point. Wear your sunscreen and, uh, you know, make sure that you are getting regular ophthalmic checks. You cannot ignore your eyes. You just can't. It's not a good plan. With eye drops. Um, I've had issues. And, and they can fix glaucoma now if you catch it early enough. Cataracts, you know, we have procedures obviously to remove cataracts that are very successful now for people. And from what I'm understanding now from my optician, because my grandmother had glaucoma, is that if it's caught early enough, it can be treated. So you don't have to worry about potentially losing your eyesight. We're improving on the science of the eyes. So these are all things, Tim, that you want prayers for, but you are the maker of your misery, I'm just going to say. Um, even as a healthcare professional, you as a patient on occasion have to take some responsibility. For years now, <clears throat> because of living in Florida, offshore fishing, and worshiping a tanning bed, I'm paying the price. Wear sunscreen. And sunglasses, because I'm sure all that time he spent on the water, Tim was not wearing good sunglasses at the time. That is probably one of the biggest lessons I was given uh, by my ophthalmal. Oh my God, I can't even say the word now. Ophthalmal. All right, it's gone. My optician. <laughs> Ophthalmologist. There we go. <laughs> Got tongue tied there. Is uh, taking good care of my eyes by using good sunglasses when I'm at the beach. I don't go anywhere near the water without wearing my prescription lens sunglasses that completely cover up around my eyes. You've probably seen me in the, in the blue um, Ray-Bans. There's a prescription. And were they cheap? No. But does it enable me to get out and enjoy the water and not worry about it? Absolutely. Don't use tanning beds. Wear sun and this little red spot on my nose. She goes, Well, we're not gonna, you know, whack that right now. And we keep an eye on it. I said it's probably like an old man spot, right? And she laughed. I was cutting up with her. But uh Oh, and I'm sure that that's the way Tim is with all the medical professionals. He'll be out here on his YouTube channel saying that doctors are the reasons that people die early. And I uh, wonder when you are talking to your dermatologist, do you tell her that you also think that she's the reason that he won't survive because doctors kill people? Isn't that right, Tim? Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all sliced and diced. I said, am I going to play any golf? She goes, oh, yeah. So they called in a, a bi antibiotic ointment to put on after I shower tomorrow uh to put on these spots i said well there's some in the back i can't reach she goes you only got uh one over here and you can go to to walmart and get a sponge that you could put that antibiotic wash on tim and use your back sweetheart you don't need to be trying to fish for women to come over and rub your back or whoever you're looking for stop fishing uh, everything else is in the front here uh, you should be able to just but uh, put it down your back. yeah, keep me in your prayers, folks. That uh, it's just a typical basal cell, and they got it with their whack job. And I got an appointment, and they don't know if it's a basal cell. It's it's only just been sent off for biopsy, and basal cells are actually quite rare. Just because that's what you had in the past doesn't mean that you're going to have the same. There's three predominant, as I said, skin cancers. The one you don't want to have is a melanoma. That you will lose a good portion of your body for them to try to get rid of that. You do not want that on the side of your head. Uh, you better hope that's not what it is. I've had people where I've had, they've had tiny melanomas and they have literally had to remove from their back almost the, half the size of a soccer ball of a flesh from somebody's back to try to get a wide enough margin around that, that cancer. 
So these are these are not things to be taken lightly. I'm glad you went to see a dermatologist. I certainly would suggest that you are out here now, supposedly talking about your glaucoma. Wear your glaucoma glasses. You're not wearing any sunglasses at the moment. So you're obviously still not taking care of your health. Prayers, Tim. Lots of them for you. Six months to come back for another full body exam. That's what I got today. And they were really nice over there. Maybe there'll be new subscribers too. <laughs> I told them about the channel. Mm. Anyway, folks, I'm up, I'm heading to... Um, <laughs> we know you told them about the channel. <laughs> you can't help it. You can't help yourself. Oh my goodness. This is the, 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 the Tim is a cautionary tale, people. He's a cautionary tale. Fred and Raffaella's, uh, tonight we're going to have the steak there. But right now I'm just going to pop in for a cup of coffee and show them all my wounds. Crush it. Tim, nobody wants to see your wounds. Okay. Just keep them to yourself. Okay. Just keep them to yourself. <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, I mean, I should make a four minute video of 16 minutes. So anyway, if you did the, like this type of content, make sure that you hit the uh, the likes, you know, um, and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you've ever had to be treated for skin cancer. I hope not. All right, guys. <laughs> I cannot believe I commented on Tim. This video is probably a hot mess. I haven't made a response or a reaction video in some time. But anyway, it's great to see you all. I hope you had a laugh with me. And uh, make sure that you're wearing your sunscreen when you get outside and your sunglasses. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.